Greetings and welcome to this lecture module on performance. We have now completed the cycle of risk assessment, risk mitigation and performance assessment. In this lecture module, we will focus on performance assessment. As an introduction, biorisk performance pertains to improving biorisk management by recording, measuring and evaluating organizational actions and outcomes to reduce biorisk. You may recall that in the first lecture on the laboratory biorisk management system, I introduced you to the concept of the biorisk management policy. This policy is then translated into specific goals and objectives. And setting goals and ensuring that we comply with specific criteria in order to meet these goals is an essential component of laboratory biorisk management. The objectives of this module are to introduce you to the concept of performance assessment, to introduce you to the concept of setting goals and to teach you how to measure performance in a laboratory setting. The learning outcomes for this particular module are as follows. Upon completion of this module, you should be able to establish goals, assess performance based on attainment of goals, and improve performance of existing processes or objectives. Let us recap the AMP model, which has formed the basis for this particular MOOC. So as I mentioned earlier, the AMP model is based on risk assessment, risk mitigation and performance assessment. So you first assess the risk posed by a specific operation or process involving a biological agent. You then mitigate the risk using appropriate controls and when you mitigate the risk you have what is known as residual risk you have to decide whether you want to proceed to work with this inherent residual risk and then you have to assess the performance of your specific procedures or objectives by conducting an audit and this all constitutes the process of continuous quality improvement in a laboratory by risk management system. Let us now move on to performance. The concept of virus performance is based on the way in which a virus management system functions to manage or minimize bio risk. As bio risk managers, we look at the system in its entirety. We do not merely look at the biological agent itself and the risks associated with it. We also look at other factors which include human factors as well as logistical factors and factors related to infrastructure of the particular containment facility. So the concept of performance encompasses all of these factors. Performance actually measures the difference between your intended outcomes and your observed outcomes. Take for instance a very simple example. You have decided to run a race of one kilometer and you assume that you can complete this race in 15 minutes. However, when you actually undertake this race, you require 20 minutes to complete the one kilometer race. Now there may be multiple factors which you have not taken into consideration prior to implementing this particular objective and these may include the weather, your level of fitness as well as your access to equipment. And when you conduct a performance assessment, you try and determine these factors which undermine your performance and that is what performance is all about. It's identifying those factors which undermine performance and which deviate you from your intended outcomes. Let us look at this example. For instance, at the beginning of the year, you have decided that 
your intended outcomes in your laboratory by risk management system should comply with the following indicators the number of incidents at your respective facility over a period of one year should be less than five the number of accidents should be less than three and the number of spills in the laboratory should be zero so you complete your observation over a period of one year and you check your records and what you all actually observe is that the number of incidents is six which is greater than five the number of accidents is less than three but you actually observe there were no accidents and the number of spills was one now based on this you can take necessary corrective action for instance the number of incidents indicate that the sop may not be integral to the functioning of that particular process so a revision of the sop may be in order an incident may also indicate a lack of training and training of personnel may be required as a corrective action the number of accidents are zero so there is no corrective action required and there is a spill in the laboratory which can be considered as an incident and this may require revision of sop so each in incident and accident must be investigated and the necessary corrective action must be taken this is an example of how we set goals for intended outcomes and observe the actual outcomes in laboratory operations a bi risk management system is basically evaluating performance based on all of the activities and efforts of people in the facility so this is an integral assessment the actual bi risk management system performance may not match the planned level of risk management effectiveness and performance measurement involves assessing the difference between the objectives and the observed outcomes performance may also change over a period of time based on the level of performance which requires continual effort the concept of performance is based on an input the steps related to an input and an output for instance if your input is a process to diagnose a specific sample there will be specific steps associated with the diagnosis of a biological agent in a particular sample there will also be an output associated with these steps and performance can be measured by maintaining documentation at each stage of this particular process when you consider performance and setting of goals you must first raise these relevant questions are the steps physically possible are they the right steps is the actual output equal to the desired output and is the output the right measure of the process these are the various questions which you must ask yourself and your team when you design an assessment for performance let us look at this example the input is to mitigate the risk of exposure of laboratory workers to mycobacterium tuberculosis using appropriate administrative controls and personal protective equipment now this is an example of a lab involved in the diagnosis of mycobacterium tuberculosis so that particular lab has decided to implement specific controls which include administrative controls and ppes the steps they have introduced are basically the first one is to conduct a preliminary health screening of laboratory workers to determine that they are not infected by mycobacterium tuberculosis prior to working in this particular facility a standard operating procedure has been put into place for the appropriate use of ppes at this facility and post project screening of laboratories has also been incorporated into the standard operating procedure for this particular facility however after completion of this particular experiment it is observed that one of the five laboratory workers at the facility 
has tested positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now this raises a question to the biorisk manager. The virus manager will have to question whether the SOP is appropriate and if this SOP is not appropriate, additional measures for improvement of this SOP will have to be taken into account and an accident analysis will have to be conducted. This is an example of how a goal has been set and how the actual observation is different from the intended goal. Performance assessment is an essential component of the BRM because it actually supports existing benchmarks and we can identify which components meet the benchmarks and which do not and if they do not you can ask why don't they meet the benchmark. For example in the case of the TB one of the workers was exposed to the TB. So we then proceed to asking ourselves the question why and the question must be answered and supported by appropriate documentation. And this is where monitoring comes into play. Performance assessment may also be required for certification and accreditation as an auditor who is involved in the accreditation or certification of your lab will definitely demand evidence of records. It prevents accidents and incidents as all of the operations within a laboratory are considered within the scope of specific standard operating procedures and it reduces the cost of operations. H. James Harrington has stated this with regard to measuring performance and I quote, measurement is the first step that leads to control and eventually to improvement. If you can't measure something, you can't understand it. If you can't understand it, you can't control it. If you can't control it, you can't improve it. Now this is basically the definition or the concept which drives all elements of performance. You must measure performance as the first step and you must measure it using appropriate tools or metrics. In the case of surveys, we call these tools instruments which measure performance. Once you measure it, you can understand it and you can interpret the results of your measurement and once you understand it, you can control it. If you can't control it, you basically cannot improve performance. So this involves the structured approach towards measuring performance. So there are challenges with measuring performance, which basically focuses on what went wrong and post incident and accident analysis. Now a good biorisk manager must be able to preempt incidents and accidents by observing behavior. And this can come through experience or through interaction with other biorisk managers who have experience at different facilities and who have encountered incidents and accidents during the course of their career. The first point to note is that biorisk performance management is an integral part of the overall biorisk management system. It pertains to standard operating procedures as well as actual operations at the facility when implementing specific processes. Now the CWA document clearly defines performance management and analysis. It states that the organization shall ensure that appropriate data are determined, collected and analyzed to assess the suitability and effectiveness of the biorisk management system and to evaluate where continual improvement of the system can be made. Now in the current scenario, we have big data analytics. For instance, you can install multiple closed circuit TVs in your respective facilities and you can also link these to artificial intelligence applications 
and you can basically collect very large sets of data which can be analyzed later and this basically reduces the cost of collecting data using human interfaces. So an increased trend to use big data analytics is generally considered an advantage to laboratory bi-risk management systems. The CWA also states that the management shall review the organization's bi-risk management system at planned intervals to ensure its continuing suitability, adequacy and effectiveness. Now the planned intervals can be on a periodic basis or can be done annually and these intervals must be synchronized with your protocols or your procedures for certification and validation of your respective protocols. The review includes assessing opportunities for improvement and the need for changes to the system, procedures, policies and objectives. So this is enshrined in the CWA document. We now move on to planning for performance assessment and planning for performance assessment answers many questions before undertaking measurements and analysis and ensuring that you focus on the most critical elements of assessment. Before you conduct a performance assessment, you must devise an instrument for review of performance. And this can be in the form of an audit, which is conducted via a questionnaire. It can be in the form of a bench audit, in which case the virus manager follows a researcher as he or she undertakes a specific SOP or executes a specific procedure. So how does this actually work at a laboratory or containment facility? We always begin with the policy. Now the policy establishes commitment and intent. For instance, I have given you an example of a general policy statement. The organization is committed to implementation of biosafety measures in order to ensure a safe working environment for the laboratory workers and for the environment. This is a policy. However, as you notice, this policy does not specify how to implement. And this policy must be translated into roles and responsibilities. Specific goals must be stated and specific objectives must be stated or developed in order to accomplish these goals. Our goal is an observable and measurable end result. As in the case of the example with the mycobacterium tuberculosis, the goal was to have zero infections of laboratory workers upon completion of that particular experiment. However, we had one laboratory worker who was infected. So we have not achieved the goal or the intended outcome. And we have to move on into analysis of why that goal could not be achieved. In order to achieve goals, we need to undertake specific steps. And these steps is what forms the basis for objectives. So objectives are the steps which we need to take within a fixed time frame to move towards and achieve the goal. And the best example of an objective and the steps incorporated within it is the standard operating procedure. When you are a bio-risk manager at a facility, please ensure that the objectives are smart and this translates into specific, measurable, attainable, reasonable and time-based. An objective should always be specific. It should not include too much description. The objective should be measurable. As in the case of TB, our objective was to have zero infections upon completion of the experiment. However, we have one infected laboratory workers. So we can measure this, we can quantify this. The objective should be attainable and reasonable. Please do not make objectives which are beyond the scope of your specific laboratory bi-risk management system 
as they will be very hard to attain and these will be flagged during an audit. And finally, the objective should be time based. The objective must be performed or attained within a reasonable time frame. Now, we have to move on to a concept known as metrics or measures. Just as you measure distance in terms of meters or kilometers or time in terms of hours and minutes, specific metrics must be developed in order to measure by risk management. These should be observable and you can ask this question how many times or how much they should be applied regularly and consistently. They should be used to trace deviations from expected performance and they should provide a warning before an incident. Now the measures which we generally use at a bio risk management facility are related to incidents and accidents. So if we decide that we have an objective to have zero incidents or our goal is to have zero incidents at the end of the year, we must assess the number of incidents or accidents and relate these to the policy, the goals and the objectives. So if we do not achieve our goals, we generally conduct uh, an analysis and look back as to the reasons as to why we could not achieve those specific goals. There are leading and lagging performance indicators. Leading performance indicators are related to processes, culture, behavior and protective barriers. So leading performance indicators are those indicators which you define as a bio risk manager and these basically set the agenda for performance at your facility. We also have lagging indicators and these lagging indicators are indicators which you observe after a particular incident has taken place. For instance, an incident, an accident or a near miss is an indication of a lagging indicator. A lagging indicator basically means that you did not foresee this particular incident or accident and it occurred. Oh, enforcement actions can be also an indication of a lagging indicator. You have enforced a specific action because you observed that there was an accident or incident. So you change the standard operating procedure and you enforce a specific set of rules or guidelines on the laboratory personnel. So these are indications of lagging indicators. Ideal indicators are relevant to the organization. They are objective and practical. They are immediate and reliable. They are cost effective. There's a sense of ownership because these indicators are developed as a joint consultative process with individuals across the organization. They guide future corrective action and they provide opportunities for improvement. The ideal indicator should be selected based on what needs to be measured. For instance, the number of accidents is an indicator which implies or determines the level of compliance with existing standard operating procedures at your respective facility. Indicators must be quantifiable. Indicators should be able to measure the performance priorities. It should examine all the levels of laboratory bio risk management adaptable to different situations and indicators should not be selected based on ease of manage measurement. An example of a safety performance indicator is the extent to which procedures established in the safety management system are applied by employees. Okay, this is a very clear example in the case of a fire safety drill. So generally a fire safety drill or an evacuation drill is conducted at facilities in order to prepare for an emergency such as a fire involving chemical or electrical agents. So in the case of a fire safety drill, the auditor will generally ask for records of a drill. 
So this involves documentation of the drill and this will give you an evidence of training. Safety performance indicators also focus on the appropriate PPEs which may be available to manage risks associated with biological agents. The frequency and scope of audits are also examples of safety indicators and alignment to current standards, codes of practice and guidelines is under indication and you may have specific indicators for the facility. Now indicators must be used judiciously. The metrics must be established by the committee prior to the deployment of the indicator. Indicators are based on methods of data collection and the available information and the data must be presented in a format that is legible or can be understood by the laboratory management as well as all the workers associated with the facility and data must also be presented based on who will use that particular data. Data can be collected using multiple methods. However, it must be collected within a specific time frame and the data must be able to measure the level of performance and should take into account the methods, the cost and as well as intrusive factors. For instance, if you are collecting data related to standard operating procedures and this involves the bench audit. The bench audit in itself is intrusive as the person being audited becomes self-conscious and this adds to intrusiveness and this can contribute to a breach of containment or a violation of a specific protocol. So data collection should be as least intrusive as possible and it should not disrupt normal operations. Upon completion of data analysis, a laboratory manager generally moves on to analysis and interpretation of the data and review of performance. Now, this process involves time and resources and it must be done by dedicated personnel within a designated time frame. What this means is that the management must allocate a specific individual or a group of individuals to conduct performance analysis and to give them a designated time frame. Let them focus on one specific task before moving on to another one in order to ensure the integrity of performance analysis. The reason or the objective behind PDCA and AMP is eventually continual improvement. However, the performance management system itself must be reviewed periodically because laboratory management systems evolve with time. The management may have new priorities or the facility itself may be modified to cater to new diagnostic procedures or research objectives. This is when you as a bioris manager must decide whether the measures are relevant to your existing or current BRM priorities. You should also decide whether the measures provide performance insights, if new measures are required and if all of the measures assist in achieving the institutional goals. In many cases, we adopt measures from other containment facilities or other laboratory management systems and these may not be pertinent to our respective situations. And this is where the wisdom of a bio-risk management system or basically a bio-risk manager is wise enough to view and revise the performance management system in order to cater to evolving systems. We have now come to the end of this module and performance assessment is basically the third step in the AMP process, risk assessment, risk mitigation and finally we have performance assessment and performance assessment is critical to the establishment of a sound laboratory by risk management system. You cannot improve the system if you do not assess the performance of that particular system. Performance assessment also helps you to measure 
whether your policies and goals are being translated into specific objectives. It establishes metrics for the measurement of performance and it also provides you the basis for investigating accidents and incidents. We can take necessary corrective action when we measure the performance of a system. Without measurement, we cannot have corrective action and we can also monitor the impact of corrective actions using performance. So performance is a very useful method to convince your laboratory managers or your top management to improve the system. That brings us to the end of this module on performance assessment. Thank you very much for participating in this module and I wish you a pleasant learning experience. Thank you.